In this lecture, I would like to talk to you about crowdsourcing in bioinformatics and systems biology. As you saw throughout the course, the problems that we are dealing with in systems biology and systems pharmacology are very complex. Through websites such as Coursera, we have the opportunity to have many people working together on the same project. So the first thing that I would like us to do is to watch a video created by St. Lyoda for Nova that maybe motivate you to think about the ability of the crowd to solve complex problems. The name of the video is called The Wisdom of the Crowd and I hope you enjoy it. Sir Francis Galton was a nobleman and scorned the common masses. He thought that votes of governance should be left to higher classes. He'd prove with all the data from a contest inescapable of guessing even simple things the commoners were incapable. Ladies and gentlemen, step right up. What kind of contest might it be? Guess the ox is white and see. Guess the weight correctly and win a prize. It's 100. Said a little one. That's much too light. At least a ton. An eager crowd queued up to play. 800 made a guess that day. So we had 800 data points. And now the ox is white is exactly. 1198 pounds. There are no winners. Sir Francis knew the rabble would never guess the weight. How might they judge important things if left to meet that fate? With mathematics, he would show how far they went astray. But in the end, his theory was in total disarray. Because a curve of all the guesses... Oh, that curve? It's the cumulative distribution function of the normal distribution. Sorry, that's what it's called. <laughs> because graphing all the guesses and determining their mean... I think he was talking about the median. And determining their median, he showed that if the crowd were one, its estimate is key. He showed that if the crowd were one, its estimate is key. Keen, yes. That's because while no individual guessed the actual weight, the average of all the guesses is exactly right. The average will generally be better than a randomly selected individual guess. The average of the masses assures us of success. I think he was talking about the media. And the larger the number of guesses we toss in, the more likely we are to get the right answer about the oxen. This premature prognostication they cannot help but stop. Galton should have gathered more data before he went shooting his mouth off. Yeah. Sir Francis's hypothesis was rocked by ignoramuses. He lost the proof he had about. He found the wisdom yeah. of the crowds. If you have a group of people and they each have tiny bits of information, then you can learn a lot if we could just gather all of those bits together. It's just like Wikipedia. Well, this isn't exactly like Wikipedia, no. <laughs> it's a little bit different. It could maybe be Wikipedia. Now, you don't even need to be an expert, but if you know something, then you're able to contribute, and that entry is able to be that much more informed. Another sample of this fair? Who wants to be a millionaire? <laughs> yeah, the audience lifeline. If a person feels like they can't answer the question by themselves, ask the audience. The audience is right over 90% of the time. There you go. How about that, Gelman? The wrong Gelman. Sorry. One by one, we're not too smart, but every guess it plays its part. And when you add them up, you'll find the wisdom of the crowd. So what you saw from the video is that when you put the minds of many people together, you can potentially achieve more than what one person can achieve. So the rest of this lecture would be discussing information that was published in a review article by Benjamin Good and Andrew Sue recently. And this is a really great review that covers many of the types of crowdsourcing projects in the field of systems biology and bioinformatics. 
So first, what is crowdsourcing? So the term crowdsourcing was coined in an article in Wire magazine in 2006, and a definition stated that crowdsourcing is the act of taking a traditional job performed by an employee and outsourcing it to an undefined, generally large group in an open call. So the review article in Bioinformatics by Good and Sue divides crowdsourcing projects into two types, microtasks and megatasks. Microtasks are projects where you don't need to know too much to participate in. You are presented with a relatively easy task, for example, as the task that we saw in the video of guessing the weight of the ox, and the combination of the input of many people results in a final great product that would be very difficult to achieve using, for example, complicated computer programs. The other types of tasks, the mega tasks, are typically very hard problems that can potentially be solved by individuals. These Mega tasks are typically are set as challenges or competitions, and only the top few solvers of the task provide a solution to the problem. Now we are going to go over several examples of micro tasks and mega tasks that are out there. But before we go into some examples, let's think about what could be motivating people to participate in any crowdsourcing project. So the first would be people just like to volunteer and be a part of something bigger and great. Crowdsourcing projects are also delivered sometimes as games and the reason people want to play games is mostly for fun. There are also now on the web microtask markets. One example is the famous Amazon Mechanical Turk that we will discuss a little bit later on in the next few slides. Sometimes you guys are participating in microtasks without even knowing it. For example, when you search Google, you're helping Google to improve their search engine because they process your search terms to improve their algorithms. And the last one is through education. So by performing those micro or mega tasks, you are actually learning and, and especially now when you have those MOOCs, the instructor can give the students projects that they can all work on together. Let's look at some examples of microtasks. So the first example is called cell slider. So this microtask asks you to label various kinds and quantities of different cells from cancer patient biopsies. So let's go to the website and look at this example. And typically when you go into those microtasks, you have a training period that teaches you how to perform those microtasks. And in this training period, they show us which cells are the cancer cells, which cells are the core tissues, and which cells are regular white blood cells. And this gives you an ability to make a selection so you can go on and try this site on your own. So this is some examples of games that you can play to help solve bigger tasks. Philo is a game that can be used to help with sequence alignment. A malt and malaria spot are games that can be used to annotate images from patients that have malaria. So I mentioned before the Amazon Mechanical Turk. On the Amazon Mechanical Turk, the motivation to complete those microtasks are very small cash awards. So those are few cents per task. So there are some examples from biomedical sciences where large microtasks were posted on the Amazon Mechanical Turk. One of them is for processing text from biomedical literature. So in the Amazon Mechanical Turk website, you can either try to make money or you can post a project and then have many people contribute to complete the project. So if I click on find hits now, you can see an example. So one is, for example, quality estimation from Arabic to English translation. The reward for a microtask is 10 cents and it maximally takes 60 minutes to complete this task. If I click on it, you can see some more details. 
and you have to be signed in in order to participate. So on the site there are 185,000 hits and a hit is a human intelligence task which is typically a crowdsourcing project. So this is an example of a crowdsourcing task hidden in an app or application and one of the famous ones is reCAPTCHA which is an anti-bot free service so you, you can add it to your website to make sure that robots do not sign in to your website and at the same time when users are logging in to your website reCAPTCHA is using your entry for helping them in the process of digitizing old textbooks and the last type of microtasks are those crowdsourcing educational and this is our case here in this course we're going to try to do some of those crowdsourcing tasks those are not graded assignments just and uh, we're going to try to experiment with this idea that we can all achieve together more than what we can achieve individually. One thing that we're going to try in this course is to extract interactions from the literature to build networks, literature-based protein-protein interaction networks and kinase substrate interaction networks. A very similar crowdsourcing project is called SBV Improver and this is a network verification challenge. They're asking you to read papers and suggest or approve interactions in cell signaling and metabolic pathways. So if you are interested, I encourage you to visit that website. So now we'll, we should switch our attention to megatasks. And one of the famous megatasks in the fields of computational biology is the program called Foldit. It's a game that involves a series of training steps. Foldit is for learning how to fold a protein from its sequence. So this is one of the most famous computational problem in the fields of bioinformatics and it's a very difficult problem because, because the search space of all possible folds for proteins is enormous. So human intuition can really be used to solve this problem. However, only the top players can really achieve a quality prediction that is comparable to computational predictions or even beat state-of-the-art computational prediction methods. A similar problem is also our ability to understand the folds of mRNA. Once the mRNA gets transcribed from the DNA, it assumes a fold that protects the mRNA from degradation. It forms hairpins that allows it to become more stable and this way it can begin the trip from its transcription site outside of the nucleus to reach the ribosomes. So trying to identify the fold of those mRNAs, it's a difficult task and there's a really nice game called ETE RNA enables people to try to fold mRNAs in many ways and this way they can also search the space of mRNA folds. So let's look at that game. So this is the Eterna website and you can begin by pressing the play now button. So it's first you're going through a tutorial that tells you how to play. So now I have to change all of the nucleotides to G and that earned me some points and this way I can move on to the next puzzle and you can explore this yourself. So many of the mega tasks are set up as competitions and typically the incentives are either money or the winning algorithms are published in scientific journals and the idea is to recruit uh, many talented people to achieve a solution for a task. In some cases the combinations of the algorithms and the solutions that people come up with to even come up with a combined method that can beat any individual entry. So in the next lecture I'm going to present to you uh, the three 
micro tasks and the one mega task that we designed for this course that all of us can participate in.